What is going on everyone, it's Nier again, and here for you some Call of Duty Black Ops 2 in this week's episode of Dear Nier. It's a weekly series here on my channel where you guys send me in fan mail, fan questions if you will. I feel it's a good question, an entertaining question, I go ahead and answer it. And uh, I was actually going through all the questions for this week's Dear Nier. And one of the big themes was a lot of them, but not all, but a lot of them were YouTube related questions. So I figure we're going to run with that theme and this week's episode is going to be dedicated to YouTube questions. And if you're like an upcoming YouTuber or if you're thinking about doing YouTube or you're just interested in YouTube in general, then I'm going to go ahead and hopefully answer some of your questions and maybe make things a little bit easier for you. So let's hop into this with the first question. He writes, Dear Nero, I have a question for you that you've probably heard millions of times, so I'm sorry if you have, but have you ever gotten a commercial use claim on one of your videos? And if so, were you able to get YouTube to back off, or does that have something to do with Machinima? So, yes, I have gotten one of these claims. It was actually on, it was actually from Activision, which is funny because I'm with Machinima, but uh, basically last year, around, eh, it was later than this, but last year, uh, when Newtown 2025, like the trailers for that started coming out, I made a side-by-side -side comparison of like what Nuketown 2025 and Black Ops 2 looked like compared to Nuketown from Black Ops 1, and I thought it was a neat video. But I got one of these uh, commercial use claims from Activision, which was weird because I'm with Machinima, and Machinima has every kind of deal possible with Activision. Like, for example, when the COD Ghost trailer came out, I was able to post that up, no problem. But people that aren't with Machinima or aren't with a certain network, or if they're not partnered at all, they get these, uh, these copyright claims on their videos from Activision. It's just because I'm with Machinima, we have a deal with them, I'm allowed to upload this kind of thing. And it was kind of like an after sight. I talked to my representative at Machinima and they're like, oh yeah, we'll get that taken care of, no problem. But uh, for other people, for other reasons, like uh, let's say for example, you put up a video of, you know, a montage and had a song in there and that song was copyrighted, then you can get one of these claims. And uh, here's a quick tip. If you're trying to like post up videos that have like music in them, if you've heard of the song, it's going to be copyrighted. If, it, if that song's on the radio, it's going to be copyrighted. One of the best ways to figure out what songs are, aren't copyrighted and are actually you know, okay for you to use in your videos is go look what other YouTubers are using, right? If you see a video, a song being used in one of my videos, then that's A-OK. -okay. Anyone can use that song, right? If you go to like a phase clan, save tons of videos, tons of montages up. If you see a song in a phase video, then you're allowed to use that song. Go ahead. You're allowed to. It's uncopyrighted. That's just a quick rule of thumb for you guys. But basically, if you get one of these commercial use claims, the best thing for you to do, if you don't, if you're not partnered and you're not with Machinima or you're not with somebody that you think would have the ability to get that removed, just take down the video. Just take it down. Remove whatever piece of copyright material is in there, and just uh, start from there. Like redo the video, remake it without that piece of copyright material. Because if you leave that video up, there's a chance that video could get you a strike. And if you get a strike, that's an awful thing for your channel. You don't want that. Next question. He writes, Dear Nero, I have a dazzle to record my gameplay. It was my brother's from a couple years ago. And the thing is, he lost the editing discs, so I cannot record my videos. What should I do? Should I buy a new editing tool? Or should I get the discs off the internet? Your sub, Ryan. So Ryan, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I've talked about this a couple times, I think. But you don't want a Dazzle. Dazzles, if you guys don't know, is a standard definition capture card. It's what everyone used to use like back in 2007 and 2008. And it was, it's just bad looking. Like if you were to take this video, right? Change the video quality down to 240p. That's roughly close to what you're going to get out of Dazzle. And you guys don't want that. If you're looking to start your YouTube channel, you need to invest the money to get an HD capture card. And they're really not all too expensive anymore. I use an HD PVR. It's roughly a hundred dollars, right? It's, I mean, it's not, it, obviously that may sound like a lot, but that's what you're going to need. Uh, I see a lot of people so often, they're like, well, I don't know if I want to do YouTube, or I don't know if I'm going to be successful on YouTube, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Dazzle I have from a couple years ago, I'm going to use that, post up some videos, and if I start growing really fast, then maybe I'll invest the money to get an HD capture card. But the problem with that is, you're not going to grow at all if you have a standard definition capture card. I mean, standard definition didn't cut it back in 2009. It's not going to cut it here in 2013. <laughs> you know, you need an HD capture card. YouTube is expensive if you want to get going on it, and you're going to need to make that investment. But uh, so I don't think you should work on getting a new editing tool. I don't think you should work to get these discs off the internet. What I think you should do is invest some money in an HD capture card, start saving up, and if YouTube is really something you want to do, then it'll be worth the investment. And that's my answer to you, Ryan. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, 
I have been subbed to you for the past few months and I have been watching all your videos since, but more recently I have decided to become more involved and I even made a Twitter and I am commenting on all your videos. I have noticed that you put amazing content and I mean amazing. <laughs> I, I emphasize that, that's what he said. Um, <laughs> then I notice how, ma how many views you get and it seems really low for someone who puts out great content. Do you have any long term goals for your channel like some uh, series ideas or anything that you would possibly do, anything new that you possibly bring to your channel? From Gummy. So there's a couple different ways to run a YouTube channel, right? There's one way where people post one video a day and they kind of just grow up long tail. And that's what I do. Right? Uh, there's other ways to do it. Like some people post multiple videos a day and they work off long tail. Basically, there's a the long tail approach and then there's the home run approach. There are certain people that can post like, you know, between like one and five videos a month. But every one of those videos is like a blockbuster. Like that video gets tons of views, everyone enjoys it, etc. What people like I do is we post up a video every day, or sometimes people post more than one video a day. And while those videos every day may not get a lot of views right away, those videos get a lot of views down the line. That's how it works. It's called long tails. When videos you posted a while ago continue to get views, be it uh, search results, be it related videos, be it Google searches, whatever. And that's the kind of channel I run. That's what kind of channel I do. I post up a lot. I could get a lot more views per video. I could get probably 10,000 views a video if I didn't post it every day. Right. If I don't post, if I were to go, you know, two, three or four days between each upload, e each one of my videos would get probably about ten thousand views. But in the long run, that's not going to help. Right. I, I, for example, you know, I'm getting two, three, maybe four thousand views a video on my on my videos, like the days that they're uploaded. Right. But I upload maybe 30, 40 videos a month, maybe sometimes fifty. <laughs> But I'm still getting about 700,000 views a month. And if you take that, you take that 3,000 views per video and multiply that by you know 40. What's that? 120,000 views? I hope my math's right on that. So it's like 120,000 views for my own subscribers. I'm still getting you know an extra 500, 600,000 views off of Longtail that month. And that's how I run my channel. That's how I think it's it's a pretty good way to run a channel. And uh, I like it a lot. That's that's how that's how I do it. In terms of series ideas, I'm doing I'm incorporating a lot more Let's Play kind of stuff into my channel as well as keeping up with Call of Duty. I think that's gonna be definitely a cool thing. And near cinema is kind of evolving a little bit, and that's I'm definitely excited for it. I, <laughs> I think that's gonna be pretty neat. Let's hop on to the next question. I hope I answered your question by the way. That's just there's different kinds of ways to run your channel, and this is how I choose to do mine. Next question. He writes. Dear Nero, I've been trying to start a channel and I got a capture card and I'm buying a microphone. I was wondering how you get more subs and views. I have a reasonable amount of subs, but how do I get partnered because I know you are partnered. P.S. I love your videos. Keep it up. Voltage Hawk. So how do you get partnered? Uh, basically, you contact a network. And a network can range. There are tons of networks out there. We got the Game Station. We have uh, TGN. We have uh, Yaosh, which is, is Yaosh and full screen the same thing? I'm not positive. Uh, we got Machinima. You got IGN. There are tons of different networks. And a lot of networks, not all, but a lot of them, like, for example, full screen. Uh, full screen Machinima, at this point, I think they'll partner you if you have, even if you have a really small channel. But here's the thing. It, Partnering a small channel isn't necessarily the best thing to do. Like people, like I see, I seen this guy on Twitter the other night, and it was it made me laugh. I don't know why. I actually checked out his channel. I'm um, just clicking around, like looking, like looking at people's mentions, and people are sitting there talking to each other. And this one guy, I just clicked on his profile because he had an interesting picture. I wanted, I wanted a bigger view of the picture. And um, on his profile, like right there in his header, he's like, "I speak into a microphone for money." And I, I'm like, "All right, well, how big's this dude's channel?" You know, he's bragging so much about making that YouTube money. And the guy's got like 50 subs and 5,000 views, and he's a YouTube partner. And let me tell you what that 5,000 views is going to net you. That's going to net you a double cheeseburger at McDonald's. 5,000 views does not earn you hardly anything. You need a lot of views to earn any kind of real money off YouTube. It's how it works. And people think uh, YouTube is like this super easy source of money. It really isn't. You picture, you picture a $7 meal from McDonald's, right? You picture something like that. Uh, to pay for that, you're gonna need about fifteen thousand views, <laughs> you know. And uh, you picture a fifteen thousand view video. It sounds like uh, to all you that probably sounds like, oh god, fifteen thousand view video. That's nuts. That's nuts. No, that's like a Big Mac meal, right? If you want, if you want to compare that to like real money. So it, it it it's weird that way. And when or a lot of networks have this idea or have this rule, I should say, not all, but some of them. I've seen a couple times, or at least I saw it with Machinima when I started. That you will not receive your first payment until you've actually earned one hundred dollars here on YouTube. And for small channels like that guy with five thousand views, it's gonna take that poor guy freaking half a year to get his first paycheck. 
So it may not necessarily be the best idea to partner yourself right away. One of the things I suggest to people is to stick on the Google AdSense program. And if you don't know what Google AdSense is, then you probably don't do videos. I think everyone's aware of what Google AdSense is. You can sign up for it. Just about everyone can sign up for it. And it basically allows you to earn a small amount of revenue from your videos. And at least if you stick with Google AdSense for a little bit, you can earn money off of your videos, at least for a little bit, as compared to if you were to partner yourself with a network, then you're waiting six months for your first payment. And if this is something that you're investing a lot of time in, like you're putting out daily content, you're put, you're going on that YouTube grind and you're trying your best to make the best videos you can, then you're going to want to at least get some compensation for it, right? And then once your channel gets to a decent size, that's when you try and partner it. And because at a point, it's hard to determine exactly where this point is, but at a point, you'll start actually making more money from actually uh, being a YouTube partner and making a CPM from them as compared to just getting it off Google AdSense. For me, I got partnered by like 5,000 subscribers, and even that's really low, but my channel was different. I was already blowing up in terms of long tail. When I had 5,000 total subs, I had just under a million total views. When I had 5,000 subs, and that's what made me so, uh, I don't know, desirable, would that be the phrase, for Machinima. I'm like, hey, Machinima, I wrote, I wrote, the, I wrote them an email. I'm like, my name is Joe. I'm starting up this, I have this channel called Near Cinema. It's taken off pretty well here with Modern Warfare 3. I, it's small at this right now. I have only got 5,000 subscribers, but I'm just under a million views. The videos I'm putting up are, uh, they're getting found by a lot of people. And that's what enticed them to want to partner me. So, to you, Voltage Hawk, I say sit on being partnered, but once you feel as though your channel is big enough, hundreds of thousands of views, decent amount of subscribers, that's when you want to get uh, in contact with a network, be it Machinima, Full Screen, Yaos, TGN, IGN, Game Station, uh, there's millions of them, I don't even know any of them anymore. Social Blade has one, I think, Maker, <laughs> there's so many. But basically, yeah, I just kind of hold off on that just a little bit, but yeah, it's pretty easy to get partnered. All right, let's hop on to the final question here. I realize I'm over the gameplay right now. It was initially supposed to only show the gameplay on downhill, but now we're playing a little hard point here on standoff because I ran way over the gameplay, and I want to get this final question in here. So for the final question, he writes, Dear Nero, what was your initial reaction to your old channel, Newfound Glory, getting a copyright strike and being taken down? How hard was it for you to deal with the loss of that channel? Keep up the awesome videos taped from Maryland. That sucked. It, it did. I was so new to YouTube, I didn't know how copyrights worked. I didn't know how this worked or that worked. I was just putting up videos for the sake of putting up videos. And what sucks about the worst is, I mean, the channel wasn't booming. It had like 500,000 views. It had like 3,000 subscribers. But that's pretty good, right? It's not bad. And what the worst part, the worst part about losing my first channel is I lost all of my first videos. I would love so much to be able to post up my first ever commentary, you know, and so you guys can see how it was. You know, I had some old montages on there. And one of them was awesome. <laughs> it, it was a Black Ops 1 montage. It was called Rose. And you know why it was called Rose? Because there's a song called Every Rose Has Its Thorn by Poison. And I decided I wasn't going to use the Poison version. I did the Miley Cyrus cover of Every Rose Has Its Thorn and used that song in this awesome Black Ops montage. It was seriously good. It was really good. And that video was gone forever because the channel got deleted. And when the channel gets deleted, there's no way to get it back. And you lose every single video that's on that channel. I had so many cool videos on that channel. And that sucks. It got taken down. And that's why, hopefully, from this week's episode of Dear Nero, you guys can learn a little bit more about copyright. You guys can know what's copyrighted, what's not copyrighted. And to make sure your awesome videos don't ever get taken down. So 10 years down the line, if you want to go back and watch your Black Ops 2 montage, you can. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this week's episode of Dear Nero. If you would like your question featured on next week's episode of Dear Nero, simply send me a personal message here on YouTube with the tagline reading Dear Nero. If it's a good question, an entertaining question, I'll go ahead and answer it. So until then, this has been Nero. Hope you guys all enjoyed. Please leave a rating, and hope you guys all have a wonderful day.